Hello and welcome to another episode of Naranji Adventures Great Destinations. Today we visit Acton Burnell Castle and Langley Chapel. Unfortunately, I do not have footage of the ride here due to technical difficulties. Robert Burnell, born in 1239, was a Shropshire lad made good. From local gentry to Lord Chancellor, his family had held land in Shropshire from the 1180s onwards. Acton Burnell takes its name from this family, and it was Robert Burnell who in the 13th century built this place. The construction was started in 1284, but alas however, sadly, when Robert died in 1292, it may not yet have been completed. Built in the style of a Norman tower, the large windows, however, show it was not a serious defensive building. Robert had a passion for building, which can be seen in the adjacent church of St Mary. The house had a three-storey accommodation block at its western end. The remainder was two storeys, the ground floor being storage etc and the second floor a great banqueting hall. The ramparts were accessible from one of the towers. They were not however a defensive feature. The house would have its place in history. The story here, however, may not be so much in the building, but in the man himself. Robert's family gave their name to Acton Burnell where he was born in about 1239. His father Roger died in 1259. Robert had three brothers, two of whom died in 1282 fighting the Welsh and a third, Hugh, who died in 1286.
Robert worked and studied in the Royal Chancery. He was of similar age to the then Prince Edward, later to become King Edward I. Robert moved to the royal household, spending much of his time with Edward. They became great friends, and Robert was appointed the Prince's Clerk in 1264. As a reward for his support and service, Robert was appointed to the Diocese of York, becoming Archdeacon of York in 1267. In 1270, the Prince tried to have Burnell appointed to the position of Archbishop of Canterbury, however this came to naught. When the Prince left for the Crusades in late 1270, Burnell was appointed as one of his lieutenants to look after his interests in his absence. Thus, when the King died, Burnell, as one of Edward's closest aides, was appointed to the position of Prince Regent, whilst the new King was absent until 1274, when Edward returned as Edward I, King of England. So well did Robert Burnell handle the affairs of state in the absence of King Edward I, on his return he appointed Robert Burnell Lord Chancellor of England. Edward visited Acton Burnell on many occasions, and England's first true Parliament was held at Acton Burnell in what was an adjacent tithe barn. It was said that but for the King, Burnell was the most powerful man in England. As well as Lord Chancellor, Robert Burnell was appointed Bishop of Bath and Wells. A second attempt to appoint him to the Archbishop was quashed by the Pope. Robert's lifestyle may well not have done in his favour, noted for keeping several mistresses. Roger Burnell died in Berwick in 1292, his body interned in Wells Cathedral. His heart, however, is buried at Bath Abbey. On his death, Robert Burnell provided handsomely for his relatives. Whilst discharging his royal duties, he amassed great wealth, acquiring estates in Shropshire, Worcestershire, Somerset, Kent, Surrey, to mention a few. At his death, he owned some 82 manors in over 19 counties, most of which were his personal property. No visit to Acton Burnell will be complete without also visiting Blankley Chapel a short ride signposted from the centre of Acton Burnham.
There has been a chapel here since the Middle Ages, but the building we see here today dates from the Tudor period. Langley Hall, whose ruins are at the nearby farm, would have provided sufficient congregation to warrant a chapel at this location. The demise of the hall and dwindling congregation brought about its abandonment thus preserving almost intact a 17th century chapel and pre-written church, escaping the modernisation of churches and chapels that took place in the 18th and 19th centuries. The chancel has a communion table with surrounding benches, reminiscent of the Last Supper, set forward with kneeling benches in a strict Puritan fashion. The roof beams are dated 1601, with the carpenter's initials. The furniture may not be of the same date, but it is certainly from the first two decades of the 17th century. From the mid 16th century, it was expected that all churches had a pulpit and a reading desk and altars were removed. Here the pulpit is to the south and the reading desk is to the north. Shall we go down and look at that farm if you can? At the adjacent farm are the remains of the gatehouse to the 17th century hall and a magnificent 18th century farmhouse.
If you enjoyed this presentation, please like and subscribe. It helps to grow the channel. And hit the bell icon to get notifications of future episodes. Thank you for watching.